President Kufuado is touting his administration as being able to achieve macroeconomic stability. Addressing the media to mark one year in office, the president revealed that government's fiscal consolidation is boosting confidence in the economy. According to him, government's economic policies are largely geared towards the development of low-income and deprived societies. The president was speaking at his second media encounter in Accra. Able to reduce the fiscal deficit from 9.3% to an estimated 5.6% of GDP. Quite simple. This is a remarkable achievement, and this is what we mean by competent economic management, unquote. It is that competence, coupled with integrity in the conduct of public transactions, ensuring value for money, protecting the public purse, that are going to bring the dream of a happy and prosperous Ghana, a Ghana beyond aid. The first working day of this year, I signed into law the three development authority bills and the Zongo Development Fund. Once the Zongo Development Fund and these development authorities are put into place, and this is eminent, we shall see an acceleration in the pace of developmental activity and the provision of essential ser social services to communities around our country in a manner that answers to the real needs of the people. Well, the president has also been speaking about the commitment to fiscal discipline, and he says that will prevent the country from uh, signing up to another IMF program. Uh, the following report captures some of the economic issues the president spoke about. According to the president, there could not have been a better time to demonstrate his government's commitment to be prudent with the country's resources. President Akufuado also spoke about progress made to clear the about 7 billion cities budget arrears from 2016. He also talked about government's commitment to put in place the right environment for the creation of more jobs for small businesses. My own view is that if there had been more discipline in the management of the public finances, we would not have had to recourse to the IMF in 2013 like we did. So it's an important aspect of it, is the discipline that you, government, and the people of the country are prepared to undergo, will be, an, and that will be the best indication as to your capacity to continue to keep your ship afloat, or whether you need to rush to Washington for a bailout. For me, that discipline is nothing that the IMF has to teach us about. We're capable of imposing that discipline on ourselves and making sure that the commitments, I, I think I've outlined fairly clearly the various strands of policy that have been brought together this year, uh, which has brought our economy to the, the more satisfactory position that it is now. A large part of it is the monetary and fiscal discipline that this government has been able to exhibit. And that will continue, because that is the only way in which, in fact, these additional expenditures that are important to be made for the development of the country do not themselves destabilize our, our, our economic system. The president also described government's program aimed at transforming the fortunes of the agri sector, that is, a planting for food and jobs, as a major success to his administration. Turning to some transport issues, and the Transport Ministry is insisting it has not sanctioned any increase in transport fares. Uh, this follows claims by the Ghana Private Road Transport Union that fares should go up by 4% uh, this week. Karen Dodu has more in the following report. According to the Union for Commercial Drivers, their resolve to increase fares by 4% this week has not only been influenced by an increase in prices of petroleum products over the weeks, rather an adjustment in prices of spare parts over the past months. But the Transport Ministry, however, maintains that under the current agreement, it may not be fair to the transport operators to go ahead and hike fares. Gloria Home Graves speaks for the Transport Ministry. The Ministry has a program that invites all the transporters every six months to deliberate on whatever the situation may be regarding fare increments in the country. We intend to do the same soon and we would like 
to invite them over and we sit and we talk. Whatever may be the outcome of that meeting, we may get it out to the public. Until so that meeting happens, we are unable to predict anything because we need to meet with the transporters and we need to sit and talk. For some, if the drivers have their way, then increments might not be good for individuals and businesses as it could increase the cost of living and production for a lot of firms. Now, the Bank of Ghana has maintained it would not make any changes to the new capital requirement for banks. Commercial banks in the country should, by December this year, increase their stated capital from 120 million cities to 400 million. Now, speaking at the fifth anniversary launch of the Royal Bank in Accra, advisor to the Bank of Ghana, uh, Grace Okofi, said there was no turning back on this move. Ebenezer Sabote has more. Joy Business understands banks are seriously pushing for a new arrangement that will still result in acquiring the universal banking license with a lower capital requirement. This is what is termed the tier system. Advisor at the Bank of Ghana, Grace Akrofi, says there is no turning back on this move. She says the regulator is prepared to support banks having challenges by merging with other stronger banks. Bank consolidation will pave way for bigger operations with relatively lower costs associated with the provision of banking services. This will ensure stability and sustainability of the banking sector and contribute to the enhancement of the financial system's resilience and contribution to the needs of our growing economy. The new banks and SDI Act has made provision for the establishment of criteria for mergers and acquisitions, which addresses in more detail what the Bank of Ghana must consider in determining whether or not to approve a merger or amalgamation under the Act. Grace Akofi was speaking at the launch of the fifth anniversary of the Royal Bank. The bank says it has come out of the recent liquidity challenge that hit the industry, which nearly threatened its existence. Managing director of the bank, Osei Asafuaje, tells Joy Business they have made significant progress in meeting the new capital requirement by December. We've gone far. We've gone very, very far. But I think at this stage, it is too early for me to be specific. But I can assure the uh, general public and our customers that we've gone very far and that come 2018 December, we will, we will have met the, 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 the requirement. What will you do specifically to convince your board uh, members and then also the shareholders to put in the capital to ensure that you are able to meet this new requirement? Uh, 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 recently, we, we did a, a strategic paper, a strategic plan for three years. We have presented it to uh, the board uh, very soon, probably next week or so. We have presented it to the shareholders for them to know exactly what we'll be using the money for and the kind of profitability profile that will engender as a result of, of, of that. So that is how we are um, going to engage them, to let them know that when the money comes, it will be near to their benefit. The fifth year anniversary celebration will be followed with other events in the subsequent days. Well, despite efforts by the Ghana Revenue Authority to broaden the tax net and encourage more citizens to honor their tax obligations, Commissioner General of the GRA, Emmanuel Kofinti, says there should be some leniency when uh, collecting taxes from especially small scale businesses. He made the appeal when he took his turn on Joy News Thought Leadership Program, the Executive Lounge. Speaking on Joy Business's Thought Leadership Program, the Executive Lounge, Commissioner General of Ghana Revenue Authority, Emmanuel Kofi Inti, indicated that if taxpayers are made to realize how interested authorities are in their businesses, they will also live up to the responsibility of paying their taxes. I believe that the taxpayer and he must be treated as a customer. He must be treated with decency. The way we interact with them. They must have a joy relating to us. Once we show interest in what they do, and we want them to progress and prosper, it will allow them to want to pay tax. Because they've seen that, look, the tax people are interested in their prosperity. And so once we are able to shift that kind of mental perspective to issues, things will change.
Because, I mean, it's good for me to continuously have three CDs every year from you ad infinitum than to pick 20 CDs from you this year and next year you are not there. So it serves as right by making sure the taxpayer prospers. In addition, he said making people see the evidence of their taxes through development projects will ensure voluntary compliance to the taxes that are demanded of them. One of the ways to inure the people to tax is for them to see results. If they see the roads being bettered, uh, having better access to hospitals, the educational system improving, then there are the evidences for them to see, and then they can play ball. And in our current situation, at least when it comes to the free SHS, if there was never a time that the pressure to pay tax was not there, now there is. Because there's evidence for why the tax is being called out for. The Ghana Hotels Association will hold its third awards on the 20th of this month to recognize distinguished hotels in the country. Now, the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Hotels Association of Ghana, Dr. Nyameke Aka, has been telling us more about this upcoming event. Obviously, we're having some challenges bringing you that story. So we uh, tend to some others we are following for you. Now, government has been advised to deploy technology to monitor and evaluate its agriculture industrialization initiatives. A great technology company, Farmaline, says this will address recurrent gaps in government policy implementation. Prince Sophia has been speaking with the director of customer success uh, associate at Farmaline, Amos Olete Usa. It will be important for government to have a holistic monitoring approach to know that all that we are providing, how is it impacting to the farmers? What is the yield that is coming out? What can be done more? Which people are in the sector? What could be the collaborations to be done? Because, for example, the uh, fertilizer distribution policy. Last year, about 50% was distributed based on government projections. Which people got a fertilizer? What was the impact? What was the acreage of farms that was used on? Now this year, which are the people that will get the uh, fertilizer? What is the means they are paying the money through? Should it always be cash? Mobile money is now what is being used all over. How can government also make use of it so that people can even pay way ahead of time in receiving the fertilizer? So one of the key things is monitoring, to look at what are the farmers growing? What is the, uh, the one district, one warehouse? Are the farmers putting the produce there? What is the market availability? How are we bringing market to farmers when they store this produce? And with all this, if we don't monitor it, then it's going to be a waste in 2018. Yeah. Well, one would say that, of course, um, government in its thinking or in its wisdom would put in place monitoring or supervisory um, institutions to check all these things you talk about. You think these things are not being done or they are not enough or what exactly? There are experience and working in the field over time, the institutions are there with wonderful people in charge. But the challenge they have is the facilities and the cap capacity needed to be able to do the proper monitoring. And I think physical monitoring is not helping. The data is collected on paper who have access to this data. When you need the data now, how can it be made available to you? So how do we infuse ICT and build the capacity of these offices to be able to do monitoring so that at central government, with a click of a button, they will be able to know that this is what is happening in, this, in District A and District B, and this is the uh, needed support that will be provided. So what we would say is that it is important for government to put in ICT measures and Monitor in the monitoring and evaluation process so that data will be accessible and data can also be trusted because we want to be sure that the person is in the field and collecting data. And that is one of our experiences at Farmerland over the years. Whatever data is collected, we make sure that you know where the data is coming from, what time was the data collected, and this helps you to know that the quality of the data can be trusted and can be used for further analysis.
Also tonight, Programs Director at the Ministry of Business Development, Yakubu Yusuf, says the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan would be targeting the agri agribusiness sector in the northern region as the program scouts for new entrepreneurs. He said many entrepreneurs in the region are found in the agribusiness sector, therefore the decision. Martina Bugri has more. In an interview with Joy News, Mr. Yusuf said two categories of business entrepreneurs are to be considered. He said those in business already are new entrants with innovation. He said even though there was a national criteria for selection, the team will also be looking at each region and its peculiar problems in the process. Two categories of business people that we brought here. We have those who are already in business and we have those who are coming to start businesses. So we'll look at the history of the already existing businesses and then we'll see what they have been doing, what they lack, what they consider high capital. Then we we'll try to help solve that by way of teaching them how to manage them well before we give them the funds. Then the startups, you know, they are coming relatively new. So we we'll look at the plans that they are bringing, make the corrections, we'll teach them how to go about it. And then when we understood that they are okay, then we will now give them the funds that will help them to start up their businesses. You know, Northern Ghana is ready to agribusiness. Uh, agribusiness is the most dominated business in that economy, especially our women. Serious consideration. The Northern Regional Minister Salif Said called on political groups to take advantage of the program. He said these political groupings can be turned into business owners to reduce unemployment. So when I look back into Northern Region, where we have very vibrant political youth groups, be it MPP, NDC, CPP, PPP, and all those political parties, and the youth are very, very active. The youth too. So for me, I see this uh, initiative to be something that we should target as our political youth groups so that instead of them sitting and just seeing themselves as political groups, we turn them into business clubs. The minister has engaged consultants. We will want the consultants and other uh, consultants who are independent of any of the political parties. They can come and take the list of these various groups, the party group that we have profile them and package them, then they advise them to register their groups to take advantage to assess their, this very fund. At the same time, we have other flexible. An entrepreneur, Abdul Aziz Ibn Shiraz said, the huge challenge facing businesses in the northern region as a quality of manpower. He added that technology was also a huge challenge confronting businesses. The general challenge of getting quality workers to man our businesses. Secondly, we are looking at access to technology. A lot of businesses down south have managed to support of the city to include technology in their drives. So you do all these things. So if we have the adequate technology, number of manpower is reduced, um, efficiency is guaranteed, wastage is reduced, and obviously productivity goes high. The third point I would like to mention is access to funding. Um, you see the room, the auditorium, there are a number of businesses in people's minds. And a lot of these businesses may not see the light of day because of lack of funding. Businessmen are meeting in this very place, Aradach. We have met here severally. A lot of them have become white elephants. So if you converse with people around, a lot of them are making similar statements that we've been to the process and then we don't have faith in that. But I think that this is a time that government should use to vindicate itself. You're still watching Business Live. Tomorrow is a very big day, and I'll tell you why. Ghana and ExxonMobil are going to sign an oil exploratory agreement. Now, ExxonMobil is one of the biggest oil firms in the world. We're going to bring you some infographic on uh, some of the biggest oil firms in the world and the impact they are making globally. <laughs>
Well, we've been reporting the story since it broke, and we'll bring you updates tomorrow when that agreement is finally signed. We are moving on to the Joy Business Van, and Ghana's uh, plastic waste situation is said to have reached a crisis point, and failure to reverse it could lead to an environmental catastrophe. Here in Accra alone, 2,500 tons of waste is generated daily, and only 45% is collected. The remaining 55%, mainly plastics, remain in the system. And if you do the math, you'd realize how terrible this is. Now, as we put the spotlight on entrepreneurs turning waste into useful products this month on the Joy Business Van, we bring you the story of Richmond Ousu from Pong, who is turning plastic waste into stuffing for pillows. <laughs> On June 3, 2015, Ghana faced one of its worst disasters. Scores of people lost their lives from flooding after continuous rainfall. The floods were partly attributed to choked gutters, which blocked the drainage system. Richmond Osifim Pong was at the scene of the incident, among many Ghanaians devastated by the incident. That was when he took the initiative to do something about the plastic waste situation. I, I thought of finding out what can the plastics be used for and praying about it and thinking, brainstorming. I came up with uh, making flowers and other things. And then as I kept on developing the idea, I came up with these pillows and other products that you see. Pillows are stuffed sometimes with foams or cup of fibers. Stuffing pillows with recycled plastic waste is really creative. Richmond acquires the plastic waste from schools and households, but a chunk of it is bought from plastic waste collectors. Once the waste is collected, it is taken to a crushing site, which Richmond co-owns. The items are crushed until they look like shredded papers. In that state, it feels foamy. The stuffing is disinfected, then dried. It's really a simple process to make the pillows. Richmond makes a cover with the foam, then stuffs with recycled plastic waste. After getting the desired um, height or the filling, you, you complete it and seal it. So, complete sealing. Yeah, then it goes to the material. We are trying to um, be more local, that's why we are lo using local fabrics. So it goes in into it. And there you have it, the pillows Richmond has branded Eco pillows. We've been able to produce travel pillows like what's around my neck, and it's also good for long journey travels, those going to the north, Kumasi, and those traveling outside. And we also had multimedia in mind, so we made Adam TV. So this is for multimedia, and this is for Joy, Joy Prime. That's it. And we say all work and no play, so we want to produce local uh, teddy bears with local fabrics and with the same uh, plastic waste we are making the pavement block. This is very strong and we plan using it for pavement and for building construction. For now, Richmond and his team produce 50 pillows a week and that is manually. His immediate aim is to acquire machinery to enable him to produce on a larger scale. I need to get access to the machines that will crush, the vehicle that will help in collecting uh, the raw materials and probably um, um, a modern sewing machine so that we could sew more of these things and solve the problem. As for response from the public, Richmond thinks it has been good so far. He runs his business, 21st Century Initiative, as a social enterprise. He uses part of the proceeds to spread his message of the need for a clean environment devoid of plastic waste. If we could um, use this waste product to manufacture these things, um, it's going to be um, a, another 
source of employment for the people in each district because waste is also a problem here. The plastic waste is a big challenge. No doubt, Richmond is passionate about what he does and his initiative is certainly helping in preventing a major environmental catastrophe in future. Look, Aisha, Chief Financial Controller of Operations. The whole market circle. Everybody know Aisha. First, now Aisha no get crowd too. Every day then she for go bank. Today be water bill. Tomorrow cash deposit. Next to be picking school fees. Meanwhile, that is the day she know the sell itself. But now, levels don't change. Aisha, they pay bills, then transfer cash all for the Ecobank mobile app top. You can buy for a shopper. Shabu shabu. You scan, then you move. Aisha, be big woman. Pay your bills and receive payments like a boss with the Ecobank mobile app. Oh yeah, download the Ecobank app, make we go. Ecobank, the Pan-African bank. I love coming to school because my school is beautiful. I have lots of friends and learning is so easy. Welcome to North Hills International School. Here we admit students from preschool up to junior high school. We have ultra modern classrooms, an up to date library, a beautiful computer room, a well equipped science lab, excellence in extracurricular activities such as basketball, table tennis, football, a swimming pool each for preschool, basic school, and junior high school. We teach ballet, dancing, cadets, and taekwondo. We have professional teachers who are all degree holders. We offer GES and British curricula. We have surround cameras so when your ward comes to school, he or she is protected. Air conditioned buses transport students from home to school and vice versa. We train students to become responsible and ethical citizens of the world. I recommend North Hills International School for your ward. We'll be expecting you. North Hills International School. We are climbing academic excellence. And that's our program tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Carl. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business.